The recovery of our great game species from the brink of disaster is a well-documented conservation success story every sportsman should be proud of. Hi, I'm Shane Mahoney. The wildlife recovery took many forms and required many efforts. Some were as straightforward as setting aside sanctuaries for depleted populations to recover, such as national forests and wildlife refuges. Naturally, the commercial harvest of some species had to be stopped, and sportsmen too had to step up and do their part by regulating their take. In most circumstances, this was enough to bring species back, but not in all cases. Today we are going to explore the story of the American elk in the great hunting state of Pennsylvania, and join one lucky hunter as he fulfills a dream to hunt the great stags of the Keystone State. These big deer were literally wiped out by overharvesting and the sanctuary approach to recovery did not work in Pennsylvania because there were no elk left to naturally repopulate. The story of how we brought elk back to this state is therefore a tale of how sportsmen and wildlife agencies have worked together to re-gift that which was completely lost. Pennsylvania elk are next on Boone and Crockett Country. Boone and Crockett Country, presented by Leupold, America's Optics Authority. I never knew anybody who ever drew a tag in Pennsylvania for elk. I thought my odds were like getting struck by lightning. It's still early. It's snowy 25 to 10. They should still be up feeding, so I'm hoping it will catch them coming back here. The Pennsylvania elk haven't been hunted in over 75 years, so we're getting some tremendous bulls in Pennsylvania because of the genetics of them. Since Pennsylvania reinstated its elk hunt a decade ago, resident hunter Dan Renda has entered the tag lottery each year, gambling on the chance to hunt elk in his home state. Despite the long odds, he is now the holder of one of Pennsylvania's 19 coveted bull tags. Prior to the arrival of European immigrants, the American elk thrived throughout the forests of the eastern United States and southeastern Canada. Though there is still some debate among scientists as to whether these native elk east of the Mississippi were indeed isolated from the Rocky Mountain elk, the scientific establishment has accepted Cervus canadensis canadensis as one of the six subspecies of the American elk. The bugle of the eastern elk once broke the silence of autumn mornings in the Appalachian, Blue Ridge, Cumberland, and Allegheny Mountains of Pennsylvania. And it was here, in 1877, that the last eastern elk was shot. The subspecies of this great deer hunted to extinction by the settlers' expansion west toward the Mississippi and beyond to the setting sun. In 1895, creation of Pennsylvania's Game Commission paved the way for an ambitious effort to restore lost populations of game animals and provide protection for those small remaining populations that still held on. In the early 1900s, the federal government began brainstorming ideas to quell the mushrooming elk herds in Yellowstone National Park and the newly designated Jackson Hole Refuge. Their goal was to relieve starvation due to loss of historical wintering grounds absorbed by the booming cattle ranching industry. Rather than sanction a hunt for the overabundant animals, the government favored translocation and winter feeding. So it was that in 1913, Pennsylvania's first shipment of Yellowstone elk arrived by train. Between 1913 and 1926, the commission released 177 elk in 10 counties, including 50 animals from Yellowstone. A law was enacted to preserve these elk, and they were not to be hunted until November 15, 1921, when a two-week season for bulls with at least four points to one antler was tentatively scheduled. 
that the Yellowstone elk survived the cross-country journey to serve as the nucleus of Pennsylvania's resurrected herds is rather amazing. A different subspecies, released into a radically different habitat, with no acclimation period? It's a wonder that any of them survived, and serves as testament to the adaptability and hardiness of the species. The Rocky Mountain subspecies would fill the void left by the eradication of the eastern, and the mountains of Pennsylvania would once again hear the roar of the wild elk. Boone and Crockett Country is in partnership with the Wild Sheep Foundation, putting and keeping sheep on the mountain, and the Dallas Safari Club, promoting conservation and ethical hunting worldwide. We're in the third day of our hunt. The first two days we haven't seen anything, no animals at all, no elk, no cows or bulls. We are looking for one particular trophy bull, and when you're doing that, you're not just looking for multiple animals, you're looking for one particular animal, and it does make it more difficult. Jeff's a good guy, and he keeps the spirits up. It only takes a matter of seconds to make this opportunity a successful harvest. In the fall of 1923, two years after the target date originally set by the Game Commission, Pennsylvania hunters once again probed the forests for elk and took 23 legal bulls. Over the next three years, 25 more bulls were taken, and then in 1927, hunters harvested 26 bulls, marking the state's most productive season since the reintroduction. Hindsight would reveal that this harvest was too ambitious for a still recovering population. In 1930, the bull elk harvest dropped to five, sparking concern among sportsmen. The following year, one bull was taken in what would become Pennsylvania's last elk hunting season for seven decades. The relocation of game species to their historic ranges has been yet another tool used by game managers to redeem the mistakes of the past and to return entire ecosystems to their former condition. The motivation of sportsmen to restore huntable populations may seem self-serving to outsiders, but the truth is more complex. Certainly, sportsmen enjoy the opportunity to hunt managed game species, but the benefits are not theirs alone. They extend to all members of society who love and value wildlife. Those who do not hunt certainly enjoy seeing these species in the wild as opposed to only in zoos and on preserves. Furthermore, the return of keystone species such as the elk benefit ecosystems in the broadest ecological sense. From the early 1930s to the early 1970s, a remnant elk population reportedly numbering between 25 and 70 animals remained in the Allegheny Mountains. Residents of Elk and Cameron counties enjoyed viewing these elk in their natural habitat. But when the population doubled between 1971 and 1981, so did encroachment onto private lands and subsequent crop damage, raising concern amongst landowners and causing animosity towards these elk. Once landowners realized that it was within their legal right to kill elk on their property, many adopted a shoot-on-site policy. In a move to alleviate crop damage and take unregulated harvest out of the hands of landowners and place it firmly in the grip of wildlife managers, the Game Commission announced in the summer of 1982 that it would issue 30 tags for Pennsylvania's first elk hunt in half a century. The proposed elk hunt, as appealing as it was to most hunters statewide, was not popular in Elk and Cameron counties. Irked by the notion that hunters from out of the area would kill 
their elk, residents took matters into their own hands. During 1982, 15 elk were shot illegally, and 11 others were killed while causing crop damage. When combined with other mortality for the year, a record 35 elk had been lost, nullifying the need for a hunt. Boone and Crockett Country is in partnership with the Pope and Young Club for the Good of Bow Hunting and the Guide Outfitter Association of British Columbia. Wildlife stewardship is our priority. I'm marking my uh, bullet. This is the bullet. It's going to complete the job so I can have my harvest and my tag filled. Day five. Elk hunting anywhere requires determination and persistence. And Dan Renda and Jeff Colwell have demonstrated plenty of both over the past four days. With the elk active only early and late, they leave camp in the pre-dawn darkness on a race to the bedding grounds. With the hunt nearing its end, adding a third set of eyes will be to their advantage in covering the thick hardwoods where these elk call home. The Pennsylvania Game Commission's elk management efforts received a substantial shot in the arm in 1990 when the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation contributed $38,000 toward the purchase of state game lands 311, a 1,600-acre acquisition at the time in the Winslow Hill area of Elk County. In 1992 and 1993, the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation contributed an additional $92,000 to help fund habitat enhancements and purchase and erect deterrent electric fencing on areas receiving substantial crop damage. Since then, the Elk Foundation has partnered with the Pennsylvania Game Commission to complete more than 175 different projects to enhance and protect over 14,800 acres, opening 8,088 acres for public access and fund research, management initiatives, and public education. Our organization formed in 1984, only two years later, the first chapter east of the Mississippi is here in Pennsylvania. It's our Harrisburg chapter. We have 10,000 members here in Pennsylvania, 25 active uh, chapters. We appeal to a lot of different groups that realize the benefit is for wildlife, the benefit is for land. That's the goal and that appeals to a lot of different folks, both hunters, non-hunters, and just people who appreciate wide open spaces. In 2000, Pennsylvania lawmakers enacted Act 111, which created an elk hunting license and fees and procedures for applying for the special permit. Following a series of open houses throughout Pennsylvania to gather public input, the Game Commission in April 2001 adopted a proposal to hold an elk hunt later that year. More than 50,000 individuals submitted applications to be part of Pennsylvania's first elk hunt in more than 70 years. 30 were selected for licenses, 27 of which filled their tags. Pennsylvania's elk hunt has continued every year since 2001, annually drawing about 20,000 applicants for the available tags. In 2006, the Game Commission scheduled and held the state's first ever September elk hunt, a special season designed to assist farmers who sustain substantial crop damage in the early fall before crops are harvested. Two elk were taken in the first September season. In 2003, the Game Commission created a preference point system for the elk license drawing and lifted limits on non-resident licenses, giving elk hunters everywhere more opportunity to hunt Keystone elk. As I mentioned earlier, other species besides elk have benefited from relocation programs paid for by sportsmen. Our mountain sheep are another prime example. The disruption to their system brought about by Western expansion during the 1800s eliminated sheep from many of their historic ranges and nearly eliminated them in other areas. Trap and transfer projects save sheep, especially our desert and Rocky Mountain bighorn species. Their recovery is documented and celebrated in books published by the Boone and Crockett Club, 
that not only record the existence of sheep populations today, but identify those healthy enough for a selective harvest and established and productive enough to produce record book rams. And now, a closer look with Doug Painter, presented by Leupold, America's optics authority. Elk in the Keystone State are truly a conservation success story. Reintroduced to Pennsylvania only a handful of decades ago, not only has the population been brought back to the point of allowing limited hunting, but the state is also producing some of the largest bulls on record. The first typical American elk to make the Boone and Crockett Club record book was a bull taken in 2003 by Edward S. Poloshensky from where else but Elk County, Pennsylvania. This bull scores 364 and 5 eighths B and C. There are currently three bulls on record in the typical category that exceeds the 360 inch minimum. All three have been taken since 2003, with the largest scoring 370 points B and C. In the non-typical category, there are seven bulls scoring over the 385 minimum, four of which score over 400, and all of which were taken since 2004. John A. Shirk's bull from 2006 received a second place award at the Boone and Crockett Club's 27th Big Game Awards held in 2010. At 441 and 6 eighths, it was also the state record non-typical for five years until it was surpassed by a bull taken in 2011. William G. Z's bull scoring 442 and 6 eighths taken from Clearfield County is the current state record for non-typical American elk. Elk roaming the hardwoods of Pennsylvania is an amazing conservation success story. The fact that there are bulls old enough and large enough to qualify for Boone and Crockett and Pope and Young is truly a tribute to wildlife management. Our hats are off to the Pennsylvania Game Commission, their managers and biologists, and to the sportsmen of the great state of Pennsylvania. Boone and Crockett Country has been brought to you by Leupold, America's Optics Authority, and the Boone and Crockett Club, fair chase and conservation since 1887. Currently, Pennsylvania's elk herd numbers more than 800, and their range covers approximately 800 square miles. The entries in the Boone and Crockett Club and Polk and Young Club prestigious record books solidify Pennsylvania's standing as one of the top 10 trophy elk states in the country. Such records are a classic gauge of successful habitat and management efforts. After five days of logging many miles on their boots, guide Jeff Colwell and hunter Dan Renda finally located an unalarmed herd in the eastern hardwoods. After scanning the timber, they pinpointed the herd bull. It looks like a nice six by six. just harvesting an animal. It's getting ready, the preparation, dressing right, taking enough food and water with you, and trusting your guide, most of all. As soon as he wrote on the lucky bullet this morning, I had no doubt, and I never get worried till Saturday afternoon about one o'clock, but let me tell you, I'm tired. Through cooperative conservation, the bugle of the Rocky Mountain elk once again breaks the morning silence east of the Mississippi. Pennsylvania is elk country again, a testament to the dedication of sportsmen, conservation organizations, and wildlife managers charged with recovering wildlife losses incurred by the short-sighted conduct of past generations. We must never forget, hunting and conservation are synonymous. Indeed, the term conservation was coined to mean sustainable wise use. 
Way to go. You got a good one. Look at the nice fronts on them. Nice six by. In the case of the Pennsylvania elk, conservation has also meant wildlife recovery. Five long days. We went deep. Working hard for bull elk in Pennsylvania. Way to go. Good one, Dan. Good one. A population is considered successfully recovered when it reaches a point within the given habitat where it is self-sustaining and management through hunting can occur, providing benefit to both the land and the wildlife it supports, as well as to the people whose livelihoods can be improved from having huntable wildlife in their midst. For elk hunters in Pennsylvania, that time is now. And while the re-establishment of an iconic big game species is reward enough, the icing on the cake is the opportunity for sportsmen to participate in the future management and health of this recovered population. The future is certainly bright for the elk in the Keystone State, thanks to sportsmen like you.